okay in previous video we talked about event types right now in this video we will talk about tags in splunk so tags are basically another way of grouping events in splunk so basically in event types we grouped event based on some search query and some conditions right now in tags basically we group event based on field values okay that's the main difference between a tag and and event type in splunk we'll see certain examples as well today how to create tags in splunk now for an example if i just give an example of tag you may have events from different hosts right now among the, all those hosts maybe there are some hosts which are basically sending similar type of event let's say audited data right so in those cases you can group those host values by using a tag okay so that means for the hosts which are sending you the similar kind of events you can tag them in with the same name so that when you will search you will search more efficiently over there okay so for today what we will do is we will work with the access combined data only if you remember previously we created two event types over here right the success events which basically having those events where our status equals to 200 right and successful purchase is right where status equals to 200 and our action equals to purchase over here right so that's that's how we have defined those event types over there right so today we'll see how to group events based on tags as well so for that we will work with this this status field only okay so if you see it over here these are the http status right so 200 means this is the this is the success status and the rest of the stuff it is unsuccessful or failed status right so we can tag these two kinds of events so basically we there are two kinds of events we can group right one is that successful successfully request and another is failed request over here right this because because these are all our http s request over here right so to create a tag there are there are certain ways you can do that so the best way is to just filter out that event let's say first i wanted to create the tag for status equals to 200 okay so i just select an event for that particular condition then i will expand that one okay for the status field if you see it over here i will write i will left click on here i will go to edit tags okay so if you see splunk already has taken the status equals to 200 as a value of the tag and i will give the name as let's say successful successful request so i'll just save it now if you see it over here this 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 has been already created the tag right so whenever you create a tag and if i just if i just without this one run this one okay so there should be two fields it will automatically create one is that this tag if you see successful underscore request it's already been showing up because those events are already part of this whole search query over here right and there is another tag called status right sorry there is another field called tag double colon status this this means the same stuff okay so that means we have a tag on the status field with the value of of successful underscore request okay which will only filter out those events where my status equals to 200 okay so now there are as, as you have seen like based on these two fields we can query directly with tag as well right so this is the purpose so that purpose of one of the purpose of tag as well right you do not need to remember this whole complex queries if you just know there is a tag of successful request which will only hold those events which will basically only filter those events where my status equals to success that means 200 right so i'll just say tag equals to successful requests right so this will okay successful request i think so this will only filter those events where my status equals to 200 automatically right so this is one way right if you see like this is simplifying your search very easily right because the those users who do not have the underlying technical details of your data you can create tags for them so that they can just if they know functionally the data so they will automatically able to query the data as well in splunk okay so now there is one way this is the one way of accessing the data with tags there is another way as well if you just 
follow the same naming conventions Plunk has created over here tag colon colon the field name right so I'll just say tag colon colon the status field name right successful request so this will give you the same set of events which the previous sub uh, previous query also has given over here okay so it will only filter the events with status equals to 200 over here okay now let us let us go back to the previous search okay we just created tag for one condition over here okay one success equals to or status equals to 200 so now what if I have multiple conditions right over here I have multiple field values but I need to create a single tag for them right so how to do that one so this is the easiest way either you can go by a particular field status okay for that particular event you just create a tag over here okay let's say failed F -A -I -L -E -D, failed requests okay so I just created the tag failed request with a single value right now I will go to settings I'll go to tags over here okay so now for that we need those status right so we'll keep this one we'll keep this query over here we'll just try to open a new window we'll go to tags open a new window and if you see when you go to tags over here right we get three options list by field value pairs list by tag name all unique tag objects okay now let us try to understand these three things first then we will create that the tag we are discussing about right the failed request tag because it is the, still not completed so if you just go over here list by field value pairs that means if you if you see it over here the field value pairs and the tag name mapping will be showing up first that means all field value pairs if you have more than one field value pair for a particular tag those field value pairs will be showing up over here as well okay now for an for an example we just created a tag called successful request over here right so let me let me try to find that here it is right the successful request we only have status equals to 200 right so whenever we'll create the failed request which i we have currently over here but we just added a single status over here right we will be adding eventually the, all the status then there will be multiple entries over here for failed request tag okay so this is basically the field value paired will be taking precedence then the mapping with the tag name over here okay then the app name and this one that means if you see it over here if you have same field value pair name defined in multiple apps over here different apps over here th there will be multiple entries over here as well so that you can change or you can edit that field app level tags as well over here okay now from here you can change the permissions as well if you see it currently both are private so i can i can just make it either this app search app and you can control this role access over here as well just like other other splunk objects knowledge objects over here okay so this one right now if i just go over here again so th we we saw what is list by field value pairs now if i just go over here the list by tag name if you see it over here so here the tag name is getting preferred preference over here so for example if you see this default tag it is having multiple fields over here right is underscore default equals to true so src user category equals to default user category equals to default right but those are not creating multiple entries over here so here tag name with the field value bears mapping we are showing up over here so even though your tag having is having multiple field values field value pairs it will all show up in a single line only okay so that's the difference between these two now even here also you can see the app level details and the owner but you cannot change the permission from here okay either but you can enable disable it once at a time okay now we'll see that one why why i said like once at a time and here in this view like all unique tag objects here all will be there like the tag name as well as the field value pairs both the mapping so that means if your tag has multiple field value pairs there will be multiple entries over here okay so let us try to let us try to edit our failed request so i'll just go to 
list of field value pairs here right okay I'll, I'll just because this is a list of field value pairs I have to go to tag name over here to edit it because I wanted to add the field names over here right in my in my field request the field value pairs I'll be adding it over here so that's why I'm going over here okay when you want to apply multiple tags for a field value pair you have to go to that that options if I if I show you again list by field value pairs if you just go somewhere here you can apply multiple tags for a field value pair okay this is the this is one one concept and if you just go to my list by tag names over here you can apply multiple field value pairs for a pa for a particular tag okay that's the difference if you so which one you want to edit that's the way you have to go over here okay so I'll just copy this one I'll paste it over here so there are if I just go over here the status so I'll just I'll just run this one I just need the different status values so 503 500 and 505 these are all the 500 values over here right so 503 500 and 505 these are the 500 values and what are the 400 values are there 408 406 400 404 403 right so 400 copy so 408 406 and 403 over here I think we almost cover all 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 right so there are except 200 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 so one is missing 404 right so that we will be adding as well over here okay so these are all the field values we have applied to this particular tag over here save okay so if you see it over here we are in the list by tag name option right so for the failed request for all the field values pairs it is showing up in a single line now let us go by field value pairs if you see it for failed request I have multiple entries over here because for each and every field value pairs I am having a separate entries over here so that's the difference and if I just go over here in the all unique tag objects over here so here you will get multiple entries as well okay for uh, from for the failed request as well as the field value pairs over here okay so we saw how to create tags for single field value pairs even even if you if you see this one over here if I just go by the default maybe I have to go over here the tag name if you see the default tag name you can use different field as well okay for for creating your tag so that's why when you will be creating tags you have to design in such a way that so that your end user according to your end users need you need to design your tag so that the search queries will be efficient and intuitive enough okay now now if you remember when we talked about event types right over there in, in a slide we talked about the search time operation order right and we have discussed that the tags are basically computed or basically created at the last right so that means you can tag any one of it right whether it is an extracted field or it is a field taken from a lookup right whether it's a calculated field or whether it's an event type you can tag anything over here okay so so just to just to show you if I just wanted to tag event type what what you can do you can just go to settings event types okay and if you remember like in the event types video I, I told you right so in the tags video we'll be doing that tagging over here so let's say for success events right because this is what our actual tag is the successful purchase tag is right so for success events I can I can tag it as successful purchase which is nothing but if I just go over here successful request sorry not the successful purchase I just copy it and I'll just paste it over here so I am tagging a event type over here okay so this is the way you can tag an event type as well as any other field which are extracted 
index time or search time as well because tagging is an operation which will be performed by Splunk at the last during the search time operation. Okay. Now, now let us try to see uh, what is happening at the background. Okay. So in our Splunk home, we'll go to etc apps as I the, the tags I have created is on search app. So I'll just go to search app local folder. So when you create a tag, it will create a tags.conf file behind the scene. Okay. So you, if you want to directly do it from here, you, you need to basically create a tags.conf file. Then each and every field value pairs. If you see it, you need to create something like this one. If you see it over here for fail request, right? I have a multiple stanzas over here, right? For each and every field value pairs. And then you have to do it something like this one. And if you see it over here for the event type, this is, this has been created for the event type tagging right so for success events event type we what it did we basically tagged as a successful request over here okay which we created for status equals to 200 over here so that's the underlying stuff over here now apart from this one there is, there is a command called tags okay which you can use to check your tags as well so let me let me show you that one so after your search right so if you just do tags, okay, and let's say status, because on the status field, we have created the tags over here, right? So I think internally Splunk, when we, when it creates the tag, right, basically during the search time, it actually calls this tags command as well. So it basically creates if these two fields only tag. If you see it over here, it will basically list down this, this tags, right? We have created two tags over here, the successful request and the failed request, right? Now on which fields it will, it is present on or any other object like the event types it is present. It will list down all these things over here. If you see it with this format tag, double colon, the field name or the event type name over here. Okay. So for status field, well, as we already seen like this, this, these two are showing up over here right now for event types as well. This successful request tag is showing up over here, right? Now here is the stuff. Now if I just wanted to change the field name, okay? Suppose I do not want the field name to show up something like this one. I just wanted to show up, let's say all tags over here. Okay. Any field name according to your need. So then what will happen if you see it over here, it will create a, that field name. Basically you can rename that field name over here as well. Okay. So that it will show up the, all the tags defined in your system. Now this could be very much confusing because we do not know on which field it is, it is defined, right? So in those cases, there are two other, two other inputs as well. One is called including name. Okay. If I just say true over here, Okay, so let's see what is happening over here. So in the all tags, if you see it over here, it is showing up the field name over here, right? Now, even still, this is confusing because we do not know on which field values this is, this is defined, right? So there is a, another input called include value over here, which is true, okay? So this will basically list down if you see it previously, the number of values for this all tags was two, but now it is nine because it is including the status as well over here. So you can do this kind of formatting as well with, with this, with this tags command over here. Okay. So hopefully this video is helpful. Now in next video, maybe we will, we will look into the Splunk C map. Okay. See you in next video.